No. Okay. This is a case for Stephen Ray Williams, CSC 602274. Date of birth, September 20th, 1993. Classified as a first felony offender. Offense, indecent behavior with a juvenile, two counts. Sentencing date, August 15, 2012. Sentenced to 15 years hard labor. Parole date, March 21st, 2016. Good time, not eligible. Full term, March 22nd, 2026. Is this information correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Renato. Thank you. Um, good morning, Mr. Williams. My name is Cheryl Renatz. I'll be asking you some questions to start off the interview process this morning. Um, so Mr. Mr. Williams, you were seen by the parole board back in 2015. And at that time you were denied. And the reason I'm looking at on the um, decision form says, um, because of the age of the victims who were three, five and seven years old at the time. Then, uh, then you reapplied, I think, and were finally granted another hearing uh, because you haven't had any write-ups in a number of years. So that's why we're here today. <clears throat> so how old were you at the time of this offense? 17, ma'am. You were 17. And um, it looks to me that you, you had a history of this sort of behavior. Would you, would that be correct? And um, that the, the behavior or the actions um, were done with the knowledge of your parents? At the time, yes ma'am. And so I do see that you did take um, the sex offender treatment classes uh, phase one, two, and three, you finished in 2014. Um, were there any additional classes there for you, sex offender treatment specifically? No, ma'am. I heard phase four was to be taken if you want to be a tutor. And at the time, I feel like that was not for me at the time. How do you feel about it now? You I've learned a lot since then. I could possibly. What did you learn? Uh, just, t you know, I don't need the details, but just get, tell me two or three takeaways that you learned by having participated in phases one, two, and three. The use of About substances, you. the use of illegal substances, uh, depression, and multiple other things affects the thought and process. And uh, I wasn't thinking at the time. And I realize now the, sim the symptoms and the things to look out for to avoid any future or reoffending. So you were, um, what were the substance or substances that you were abusing? Marijuana and crack, cocaine. When, when, how old were you when you first started using drugs? 16, 17. So you were 17 when this happened. So you'd been abusing illegal substances for about a year? About a year, yes, ma'am. How often did you smoke? Maybe once, twice a day. Daily? Two days a week, possibly, at times. Where'd you get it? How'd you I, get the stuff? My stepmom at the time. Mm -hmm. Did you have I, a job? Were you working at all? No, ma'am. I was still in high school. Did you finish high school? No, ma'am. When, when grade did you drop out or quit? Twelfth grade. Hmm. Very close. Have you gotten your GED since? Yes, ma'am. Good. Um, are, do you, are you seen by mental health? No, ma'am. Have you ever had a mental health diagnosis? Um, don't think so. Okay. 
but you have had an uh, uh, evaluation whenever you got came to prison. Yes, Did you? How long you been in jail? Ten and a half years. <clears throat> and your sentence is fifteen years. Yes, ma'am. Um, tell me, uh, I see where you did living in balance one and two. You finished that in 2014 also. What'd you, um, learn from that? A lot. I've been a mess. I thought about it, but I don't remember if I have the papers, but I've learned a lot. I can't say I can pull anything up immediately off knowledge. You can say that again. I'm sorry. I've learned a lot, but I can't pull up anything immediately about living about because it's been a while and my memory is a little off. What about Cage Your Rage? You just finished that this year. Yes, ma'am. What did you learn from that? I've learned through Cage Your Rage how to control my anger and realize the problems I have and know now how to control my problems and control my outright outbursts better your last write up there was in two was oh, quite a while ago 2016 that was for fighting yes ma'am so you know whatever happens you you have a release date and well you don't have a good time date but your full term date is 2026 what thought have you given? What would be your transition plan for transition from prison to community? I'll be living with my aunt and uh, Shreveport at my dad's house and working toward getting a mechanic, a mechanics job at a dealership or a local shop or something. Working mechanics. What's your job there at the prison? Currently, Dom Mortley. How long you had that job? Two, three years now. Okay, good. I, uh, you, you must know, uh, and maybe they mentioned it to you at your last hearing, but all law enforcement is opposed to an early release for you. I understand. Nothing you can do about it. You just need to be aware of it. I understand. All right, uh, Warden Bickham, is there anything you can add to the conversation? Uh, not really. He, he's had a decent conduct record. Uh, that's really about all I have to add to it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have no other questions. All right, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. W Williams. Good morning. You, you know, your, your crimes are very troubling. Um, you know, the, the age of the victims, but also your age uh, when you were committing these offenses. Um, do you know what a pedophile is? Yes, ma'am. What's a pedophile? Pedophile is someone who sees child children as sex objects. Okay. Um, do you consider yourself a pedophile? No, ma'am. Why not? At the time, their drugs and other influences as were part of what led me to do what I did. And so you really think it was the drugs that caused you to have sex with a three-year-old? Yes, ma'am. A lot of people use drugs, and that's not how they typically, you know, respond to situations. So what makes you think you're not a pedophile? I mean, you, you, the children involved were three, uh, seven, and... Um, I hand them all down, but I don't quite remember, but they were all really young children, uh, three, five, and seven. At the time, I was 
not very popular in school and had depression and anxiety issues and didn't see myself as a very valued and valued person and led me down bad roads, strong roads. And I've better I've can I can I ask you a question? It might be difficult to answer, but I want you to be honest with me. Have you been the victim of sexual abuse? No, ma'am. Okay. So again, I struggle to understand, uh, you know, how you could uh, molest the three, a five, and a seven-year-old, but you don't see yourself as a pedophile. Come up and growing up, I moved around a lot and seen my mom abused, moved around from house to house, high school to high school, and was in a wrong mind frame and at the time. And I've since been incarcerated, I've tried to better myself and learn that what I did was wrong. To ensure I, and ensure I don't do it again when I get out. Well, obviously, when you were seventeen, you knew that it was wrong. I'm, I'm... What happens if you get that urge again? How are you going to? How are you going to manage that? I will look towards other means of. It's biding my time, mechanics, studying, learning more. Learning but, those are, but, but those things aren't going to satisfy sexual urges. I don't know how to answer that. I, I, sexual urges, I just won't I'll try to keep my mind away from that in order to avoid the urge. Well, I'm just looking for tools that you might have acquired that would help you do that. And you can't, you can't remember anything, it seems from your sex offender treatment that, you know, that has equipped you to be out in the world and not, you know, give in to those urges. I admit I need to study, look through the phases and read through them again. I need to get more copies of them because the copies I had, I don't know what happened to them. Okay. Reading through them, Mr. Williams, isn't going to help. If it hasn't already penetrated your mind and changed your thinking and giving you insight, you know, just reading something isn't going to, to be any value. It's just not. And I'm just concerned that you don't have any real insight into who you are into why you um, chose little kids to be sexually active with. I don't see that you have any skills that are gonna help you when those urges arise. And I, I'm just real concerned that, you know, this is gonna happen again. I genuinely am concerned because I don't feel like you're, You've, you've got the tools or the insight to, to understand that you are a pedophile. You are a pedophile. And it's not because of drugs. It's not because of your upbringing. It's because of something within you that causes you to be sexually attracted to little kids. And I don't think you're there yet. Uh, but that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate talking with you. All right. We'll hear from Miss Tina. Take your mute off, Miss Tina. Okay. Hear you. Go ahead. I think that Stephen's ready to come home. He's been out of trouble. He completed his GED. He also completed the automatic class. I think he's ready to start integrating back into society. 
All right. Thank you so much. Now we're here for Miss Sharon. Okay. Miss Sharon. I don't think he's ready. And I don't think the kids are safe out here in the open with him being out. I don't want to put other kids in danger. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Williams, would you like to make a statement on your hat you on your behalf? I've tried my best to better myself in here and learn, take the classes that are required of me to learn things. Granted, I apologize, I can't remember them off the top of my mind. My memory is hazy, but I've tried bettering myself through getting mechanics trade. I have got studied and learned numerous other things sound technician. I know how to set up sound equipment. I'm currently studying computer programming on my own terms, my own time with books I bought. I feel like if released, I would have the means of not reoffending. I have other things to put my mind to, to focus on, to where I won't fall back into that pedophile mind frame. That's it. All right. Thank you. Is the panel prepared to vote? Ms. Renata? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Williams, I, uh, you say your memory's hazy, uh, and that, that concerns me because you are unable to articulate really any lesson learned from the classes that were most important to me, and that's the sex offender classes and the substance abuse classes. You really couldn't you couldn't tell us what it was that you learned from that. Um, and that's concerning to me. Uh, I did mention you have law enforcement opposition and you also, um, they did a, a, a risk assessment um, to determine your likelihood to reoffend with a sex offense and you scored kind of moderate on that. So based on those uh, reasons, my vote today is gonna be to deny your parole. All right, Ms. Jackson. All right, um, Ms. Williams, I, I commend you for the courses that you've taken. I commend you for the skills, the job skills and the educational skills you've attained. But my concern is, have you really uh, learned and understood uh, the nature of your crime and your vulnerability to reoffend? Uh, you might need to take phase four. You might need to start over again since you can't seem to remember uh, anything specific from the courses that you took. I'm not comfortable. I, I don't think you're ready. I don't think you have the necessary insight into your situation. And I don't think you have the tools that are going to help you when you get out. And our concern is, you know, twofold, you know, you're being successful, but also uh, protecting the public. And right now, I just don't feel like you're in a place where I would be comfortable uh, letting you go home. So my vote today is to deny. You have two votes to deny your pro. Also, I'm going to vote to deny your pro today. You have law enforcement opposition, victim opposition. Uh, I don't think you're, you're, you're quite there yet. You keep taking some... Uh, Courses. So three votes to the night today. Your parole's been denied. Thank you. Oh my God. Ken, when you think you've seen it all, this is terrifying. This is. When well, Miss Jackson showed up on the screen, if she was the last one to enter, I was like, yes. And then she came in and she says, 
And because after Mr. Natsu's questions, you kind of don't really have an idea of what's going on. And she says, do you, do you know what a pedophile is? And his parents knew about it the entire time. Why is his mother not locked up? Why is she not sitting in the cell? Why? How is it possible? If it's a known fact that her parents knew about it, why is she not behind bars? It's madness. And I'm tired of it. He got a 15 year sentence. Why? Why? He's so young. He's going to get out and he's going to. How many more children is he going to harm? It's not if, it's when, and it's, and it's how many until he gets caught. And he's literally going to move back with the mother who was making it possible for him to do it. No, this is not okay. This is just not okay. And this is why we do this. Because you would not believe it if I told you that there was a, a man that was doing this to multiple victims. A three-year-old, a seven-year-old, and others. And that he got a 15-year sentence. And his mother knew about it and wasn't locked up. You would say, you're lying. You're exaggerating. I don't believe you. Because I would tell that to anyone who told me that. It's not believable. It's just not possible. The system can't be that broken. No one would sit aside and let a mother not get locked up. Or the father, wherever he is, not get locked up. You have one conversation with this cockroach, and you know, as Miss Jackson said, he is a pedophile. What are you going to do not to? I don't know. He doesn't. He doesn't even. There's what is going to keep society safe from this when it gets out? I don't know who this speaker was in a, in opposition, but she was right to the point. Children will not be safe if he is set free. It just doesn't make sense. He's still locked up. He's 29 years old right now, as of today. Fifteen year sentence. He was locked up in twenty twelve. That's ten, that's ten twenty-two. He's four years away from being a menace. Why? There is no answer except that the district attorneys are cowards. You can't put a three year old on a stand. Can you? What excuse do you have as a district attorney, as an assistant district attorney to say, this should get 15 years, this cockroach should get 15 years?
What judge would agree to a deal like this? They're all cowards. And this is why we do this. You know, these positions, they are elected by their constituency. And if their constituency knew that these were the deals, that these were the people that were being released back into society, I don't think they would vote them into office. So here we go. Now the world can see it. And this is why we do this. YouTube does not monetize these hearings, believe you me. We are doing this so that if someone Googles this cockroach's name, because one day he will get out, Google his name, nothing will come up but his little prison record that doesn't say anything. We'll have to register, and hopefully he does, right? Well, we don't even know the terms. Who knows what deal they gave him? Some of these people, they get these, they only need to register for 10 years. But this hearing will come up, and maybe a child will be saved because someone will be... Have a, just be a little, maybe they'll just Google the name before they invite him over to babysit, invite him over to set up their sound system. Can't make it up. But with that, I'll let you go.